Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. This is when it goes south. Do you want to confront them? I want them out of there now. <laughs> what are you doing? I know you're being There's a camera right there. Can you explain that, pal? $6 an hour to my boyfriend. I'm sorry, I mean... From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh, Jesus. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. that camera off. Oh, Come on. Oh, Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another installment of Cheaters. Meet Mary Ben, a delicate woman saddened by her boyfriend's recent and abrupt change of behavior. Unable to resolve the problem on her own, Mary calls on Cheaters. Mary Ben, age 22, a nurse who is concerned that her boyfriend and father of her child may be getting a checkup from another female. We met in high school. Just right before we got out, we were both seniors, and we just had a lot of fun together all the time. You know, at the beginning, lots and lots of sex and all that good stuff. Always laughing and talking. In our first year, we had our baby, Daniel. And it wasn't even that bad just after that, because you know they say that kids change your relationship, and it, it seemed really good. I started to wonder if he was with anyone else. Um, mostly I thought in the bedroom he was a lot different. Um, I know it's not for sure, but it seems like you know he ejaculates a little bit less, you know, and we go about two or three weeks without it. And he just doesn't feel like, um, it doesn't feel like he's trying to please me anymore. Right now we live in an apartment. I've always wanted to get a house, like next year, I hope. Go ahead and get married. I want my friends and family to be with me. I just, I want us to be happy. If I do find out that he's cheating, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll be hurt and betrayed, I just, I just hope he's not. I don't think he could do that to me. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Matt Grissom, age 22. A telecom salesman who may be roaming about town with another female romantic interest. Investigation day three. Investigators conduct an in-depth conversation with Ms. Ben to discuss the advantages of utilizing a miniature hidden camera. All seems well at Mary's apartment as the hired babysitter, Nicole Howell, is observed relaxing on the couch with a couple's son. But Cheater's P.I.s are caught off guard when a person of unknown origin quickly crosses in front of the concealed camera. Inspectors are surprised to discover that the suspect has come to the apartment during working hours. Cheater's watches closely to see if suspect Grissom simply dropped by to check on his cherished youngster. Unfortunately, that conclusion is quickly swept under the carpet. The babysitter comes back to the living room where suspect Grissom impatiently waits. After watching the tube for a while, suspect Grissom makes his move and plants a juicy one on the naughty babysitter. Grissom is apparently very pleased with her work ethic. Already, detectives have begun to solve the case, but continue on with the investigation to compile more sufficient data. Investigation Day 7. Cheater's scouts get right back to work after coming up short for a few days. 
The hidden camera reveals that the babysitter is taking a quick catnap. Sometime later, suspect Grissom totters in and heads right for the sleeping caretaker. Following his instincts, Grissom gently wakes his sleeping beauty to get a little lunchtime action. Companion Howell is obviously a little groggy from her nap as she lovingly leans against the suspect. Grissom takes it upon himself to snuggle up to his companion to get her warmed up. Cheaters' spies end the day's investigation after suspect Grissom woefully exits the apartment after failing to reach his goal. Investigation day 12. Cheaters' PIs press hard to wrap up the surveillance, but it isn't easy. Nonetheless, investigators are eager to bring Mary Ben the answers she needs. On this day, after showing his son some passing attention, suspect Grissom quickly shuffles him off to his room so he can focus on the business at hand. He illuminates the ceremonial candle, and companion Howell cuts off the lights. These two evidently want everything to be perfect for their shameful shindig. After dotting the I's and crossing the T's, suspect Grissom moves in for the kill. He gives her a few gentle kisses on her cheek and then aggressively pounces upon her. It appears that these two could care less about anything other than their own selfish indulgences. Mary, once again, is hung out to dry per the secretly recorded telephone call. Hey, sweetie. Hey. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I'm on my lunch break right now. I'm going to get off early tonight. Uh, oh, really? I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm still not going to have time to stop by the ATM. So will you give babysitter 20 bucks? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. OK, and I left some uh, hamburger helper in the fridge for you. Oh, did you? Cheaters cannot let these activities continue any longer and moves to contact Mary to present the details. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that Matt's infidelity is no longer a question, Cheaters reveals the unsightly footage to Mary. Gathering up all her self-control, Mary readies herself for what is to come. Well, Mary, um, obviously you know where we're at. And well, I have some footage, and I want to go ahead and bring you up to speed on what's going on. The frustrating thing is that I do have to give you some news that you're not going to be too pleased with. On this day of investigation, here's your boyfriend, as he told you he was at work, when in fact he wasn't at work. Here he is, and it, I'm sorry, at this point, that's, this is when it goes south. It's pretty sickening. Every day that she babysat, he tells you he's out with his buddies while you're at work. He tells you he's working while you're at work, when in fact he goes over for a little gallivant with your babysitter. Three days of investigation. The saddest part is here they are with your little boy playing and having a great time. And, and God knows what he's thinking. And then here they are again, kissing, and it's just, it's sickening, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where are they now? They're at your house. He's not working tonight. What I want to know is they are there right now. Do you want to talk to them? Do you want to confront them? I want them out of there now. You want them out of your house? Sleeping. What have you yeah. been doing with you our man? You broke up our family. What do you care about our baby? 
What is she talking about? What are you doing here tonight? Is this work? Can you explain that, pal? Six dollars an hour. My boyfriend. <laughs> Would you take her? Well, at least baby? I can take care of him. Oh, whatever. And You're just a little yeah. piece of ass. He told me he loves me. Okay. <laughs> What about this? Tell I, her what you all these me. promises. What about all this? I love I'm, you. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, what Tell about her I want to have you? Leave you know, her you know for me. I Coming up, the conclusion. Tell I, her what you All these me. promises. What about all this? I love I'm, you. I'm sorry. I mean, what Tell about her I want to have you? Leave you know, her you know for me. You so you've been telling her that you're gonna leave her. Is that is that true? I don't know what she's talking about. So <laughs> you, mother, you were my first. You told me that you I, love me. You told me that you can't leave her for me. You told me I that. would never leave her for you. You're just a piece of ass. That's oh, all you man, are. You're a sick puppy, dude. Look what you did. You broke uh, up our family for nothing. <laughs> Sorry. What does I love you mean? Apparently not too much. Are you ashamed of what you've been doing? Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not proud of it, especially not now. Is that your jacket? No. Leave, I hate you. Just go. You don't live here anymore. It's fine. I want you to know I sent your daughter home because I found her my boyfriend. Because <laughs> she's a little whore, that's why. she do that? She probably doesn't. <laughs> She's a bitch, too. <laughs> you want to call your brother? Have him come on? Yes. Let's get you somebody here. and We're going to leave you. Let's go ahead and roll out of here. <laughs> Let's leave her. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. 
Following the confrontation, Mary focuses her energy toward the healing of her shattered esteem. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on her well-being. But now, Cheater speaks with confronted adulterer Ray Richard. Cheaters gives Ray the opportunity to present his side of the story. Ray Richard, age 41. Ray comes to Cheaters to present his perspective on events surrounding his earlier confrontation. I didn't realize at the time that you were looking for me. I, I walked out of the racetrack and uh, uh, I was approached by you. You said, hey, Ray, and I, I wonder, I said, who are you? And then I see my wife, so I run back up in the store, you know, like. Excuse me, Ray. You showed me that camera with uh, in the park, you know, I, I felt filthy, you know, I felt dirty. And I felt like I deceived my kids. There's something, her panties are on the dashboard, for God's sake. Oh, no, no, that ain't sex, no. man. The first week of doing surveillance and investigation, what did we find? What did we find, right? We found you with her. You know, even though we still deal with the daily mishaps of life and the struggles, we, we're aware that, hey, we can trust one another to a certain degree because I did more or less put a, a, a level of distrust there, and, and now I'm trying to regain, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I'll make it up. You can't make this up. Ray, it's, it's been dad. done. I can make it up. I'll make it up. The president did it. He made it up to Hillary. Why can't I make it up to you? We just give a damn just about regular Hillary people. Or the president. And you know, just to recognize that that the president he had made a mistake, and uh, he openly spoke to the public and stated, "Hey, I made a mistake." Uh, you know, at first he lied, but you know, just like I did, I lied at first too. It wasn't none of me. It was my twin. Oh, that's my twin. I let him borrow my car. Oh, your twin. You don't have a yeah. twin, right? No, nah, that's me. Uh, I'm sorry. I have you hand in hand here. Now here you are again picking her come up, up right? No, 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 no. If you put an image of me right now, or then and now on the screen, that was my twin. You know, uh, because that person he don't exist anymore. So that that was a reflection of me. It was a reflection of my past. Sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Hey, come in. Just don't touch me right now, please. Just don't touch me. Everybody just stop and think for a moment in time that it could be you. And you could lose, you could lose those that you love. But getting a second opportunity like Bill and me, it's like, you know, getting a chance to make your dreams really happen within that guideline that you planned as a kid up to your teenage years. And now I'm a daughter and I'm getting an opportunity to actually do it. <laughs>After the confrontation, Mary took a big step back in order to accept the reality of her situation. After paying a visit to her family psychiatrist, Mary stated that the shock of the situation is just too much to handle, and her mind is simply overloaded. Cheater's producers are happy to report that she's feeling much better now and has begun to take an antidepressant to temporarily treat her condition. She claims that her aspirations to continue family life with suspect Grissom have dissipated and that forgiveness is not a viable option. Matt Grissom has spoken with Cheater's producers and says his unfaithfulness is due to not being in his right mind. He claims no responsibility for his actions and blames it completely on work-related stress. Mr. Grissom believes that Mary should give him another chance. He claims that he should not be held responsible for something that is basically out of his control. On her end, Nicole Howell has been a bit standoffish when approached to discuss the affair. She says that Mr. Grissom has broken her heart. She claims that her virginity was sacred to her and that he took advantage of her innocence. Her final suggestion to viewers was to hold on to your virginity as long as possible because it is something you can never get back.